So there's my son. He's raising his hand literally at the auction, <laughs> bidding against five, six other investors. And then it got to him and another investor. It got to 110, 111. And I literally was like, oh, man, we lost this house. Wouldn't you know it, 112, he raises, my son raises his hand. The other guy bows out, shakes my son's hand. Congratulations, son. And we went the hard money route. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. This is the show where we talk about how to actually get private money for your real estate deals without asking for money, without begging, without chasing, without persuading, without trying to talk anybody anything, without getting on your hands and knees and putting your hands underneath your chin and begging for the lender or the hard money lender to fund your deal. No, this is the show where we talk about having the private money chasing you for your real estate deals. Well, my guest today, he's raised his own private money. In fact, just in the past four months, he's raised $1.4 million. Well, I'll tell you the biggest part of his success, he's a follower of Jesus Christ, just like I am. And his mission is to help his private lenders that he has shown what private money is to, to help his private lenders actually acquire, maintain wealth. He does this through real estate investments, business coaching, and insurance products as well. Well, he's been investing in real estate for over 10 years, and he just recently started raising private money for his real estate transactions exactly the way I do. In just a moment, you're going to meet my very special guest, Dan Cantiana, right after this. Welcome to the show, Dan. And I tell you what, I love your byline, Dan Can, like short for <laughs> But Dan, I'm so glad you're here to the show. You're going to, we're going to pull back the curtain. We're going to go over step by step exactly how you started raising private money, uh, how you did it so quickly. But first, share with our listeners and our audience um, how we found each other. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful story, my friend. Um, so it began about four months ago. Uh, I really dislike yard work. Yes, yard work. Uh, my wife, she loves it. It's ministry to her. So about four months ago, I was assigned to move this massive pile of beauty bark. And I thought to myself, how, how can I make this a win? I want to bless my wife. I want to bless myself. I had a few hours. So I literally looked up uh, raising private money on Apple podcast, your podcast showed up. So I put my buds pods in, I started listening to it. Three hours later, I was so happy because my wife was happy. The beauty park was laid, but then I also listened to your podcast for three solid hours. And I said, wow, I want to do this and I can do this. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Um, I ordered your book, you know, and you signed it, you sent it just like you say you're going to do. And I literally just read the book and I did the book. That, that's all it was. And obviously there's some things in there, but that's how we met uh, beauty bark and a podcast. <laughs> I love it. Then, you know, it's always so interesting to me actually how people's lives, uh, you know, uh, come into the same space, how we meet each other. And I'll tell you one thing, I certainly believe in the law of attraction and, you know, your core beliefs are the same as mine. Uh, our foundational beliefs are the same. Now I saw uh, that you had written in and I love this quote. I got to read this. It says, um, Hey, I want to give you an update. You say um, in three months, I've raised over $1 million. I really appreciate your help. The system actually works. So I got to ask, what do you mean by the system? Yeah, well, a um, little backstory. I've been in the marketplace for business for about 17 years. 
And there was a gentleman that was a mentor of mine and he took a auto dealership from the lowest in the region to the top in the region in four months. His name was Ken Williams. And I asked him, I'm like, Ken, how did you take this Nissan store from the bottom to the very top? And he was a very eloquent man, very kind. And he sat back and he said, Dan, businesses, no matter what they are, they're about systems and people. Never forget that, Dan. Hey, it's man, Dan, that's people. a writer downer right there. Yeah. I love it. No matter yeah. the business you're in, it all comes down to people and systems. I love it. Go ahead. So basically, I took your book. That was my systems, which you put together for us, which is wonderful. And then I started talking to people. Uh, I've been a business owner for over 17 years, and I can tell you, whatever you talk about happens. It's that simple. The Bible says that, you know, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those that love it will eat its fruit. That's paraphrased, but it's in there. And so when you talk about life, you're going to get life. When you talk about things that aren't life-giving, unfortunately, that's what you're going to get. And so what I started to do is I just started talking about, hey, this is what I'm doing on real estate. Would you like to partner? I've been in the underwriting world for over 16 years, Jay. I've been underwriting items for 16 years. And so your program is about financing. It's about people, but it's also about basic underwriting. And when I sit down with somebody, I tell them my story, like I had mentioned before. Yeah, I'm the son of two immigrants. My mom came here in 1958 from the UK. My biological father came from Santiago, Chile in 1973. My mom had me when she was 18 years old in a small town, Port Orchard, Washington. I grew up in Section 8 housing and food stamps. I had amazing teachers and coaches that, and mentors that showed me a way of life that I have totally been blessed by. My mom worked extremely hard to provide for me. And so that is a way, a life, a system. Your book shows us exactly what we need to do. We just have to focus on the people part. That's creating relationships, letting people know what you're doing. And when they see my passion, I think that they want to get involved with that. But in the same sense, any business, Jay, is built on trust. And so if you can build trust and you can point them to this system, you can have wild success. Uh, I hadn't planned on giving my book away for free today on the show. But <laughs> mentioned my book about seven times. So I guess we should tell our audience and our listeners what we're talking about. So my book is titled Where to Get the Money Now, Where to Get the Money Now. And um, and so if you're listening or watching the show, uh, you can pick up the book for free. Just cover shipping and handling at www.jayconner. And I'm an E-R, not an O-R. So that's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. Again, that's J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash book. And just like I did for Dan, I'll autograph it for you. And you know, <laughs> believe it or not, Dan, I mean, can you believe the United States Postal Service is still in business? And so <laughs> I actually will three day priority mail you shopping center, et cetera. But my focus has been single family houses. Well, the first six years that I was in the business, all I knew to do was go to the local bank, um, fill out an application, get a line of credit, get on my hands and knees and beg and put on my sales hat and all that kind of stuff and get the bank to loan me money. That's all I knew to do to get my real estate deals funded. Well, something happened in my story in January of 2009 that caused me to have to now go search for a new and different way to fund my deals. And that of course here is this world of private money where we make the rules. We don't beg and chase, you know, we don't put in applications. We put on our teacher hat and we start teaching people what private money is all about. 
I, I want to hear your story, Dan. You've been investing in real estate, you know, for 10 years, and then you start looking for private money. What happened and why did you start looking for private money? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, so I'm here in beautiful Spokane, Washington. And uh, even before that, I invested in uh, Tacoma, Washington, Pierce County. And it was very much traditional, right? You go, you go to the bank, you get that down payment, and yeah, and you're very limited, right? You're only as, as strong as the down payment that you have. When I came to Spokane, one of my mentors, Kevin, who's awesome, he really encouraged me to get into real estate. And me and my son at the time, he was 12 years old, and we would go down to the auction because I want to teach my, my sons how to, how to do this. And so we would go to the auction, and, you know, we would then go to the hard money lender. And, you know, it was a fun story how we got our first one. Uh, we prayed before we went into the courthouse steps to bid. And I was like, hey, we have to have a bottom line, top line that we're going to spend. And it was $112,000. That was the bottom line. So there's my son. He's raising his hand literally at the auction, <laughs> bidding against five, six other investors. And then it got to him and another investor. It got to 110, 111. And I literally was like, oh, man, we lost this house. Wouldn't you know it, 112, he raises, my son raises his hand. The other guy bows out, shakes my son's hand. Congratulations, son. And we went the hard money route. So we've done that for the most of our investing. We go to a really great hard money company here in town. And, you know, we bought, I think, eight or 10 using that route. And, you know, I just did the math. And between the fees and the points and everything, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to pay anywhere from sixteen to $28,000. Now, some of that was my fault because the loan was a little bit longer than what it had to be because of the reconditioning. But this private money sector, it's like you say, said or say, you get to write the rules, right? And so you present a rate. You get to collect the fees. Like it's, it's really, really beneficial to an investor because if you do five houses in a year with this program, You'll save anywhere from forty thousand to one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. For sure, that's like, that's like flipping two houses. I mean, that's amazing, and that's why when I was move, moving the beauty bark, I was like, "Oh my word, this thing is going to work!" <laughs> right, absolutely. So, what was it that happened that caused you to look for a better way? Well, it just really happened chance. Uh, I'm a we homeschool our children. And so we're trying to teach ourselves and our children a love of learning, a lifetime of learning. That's really our mantra as a family, a lifetime of learning. And I just like to continue to learn. I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so learning a new way of doing something is kind of innate to be a Cantiana. Like we learn and we learn a lot. And so reading the book and doing it and having that, you know, we all love and uh, dopamine endorphins, right? And so like you, you read the book, there's a task, you do the task, hey, that worked, positive reinforcement, let's do it again, right? And so that's really what the motivation was, is we just love to learn, I love to learn, and by the way, it works. I love it, I love it. So you ordered up the book, you got the book, you read the book, and you've raised $1.4 million in four months uh, for your real estate deals. Give us the steps. Of course, I know the steps that are in my book, but you might have gone about it a little bit different way, you know, kind of thing. So what was the first thing that you did on your private money lending attraction course? Well, first and foremost, I read the book twice. <laughs> uh, I, I knew that I wanted to read it twice. Because if I'm going to attach my name to something, I want to make sure that it's done with excellence. Uh, you know, Colossians 3.23, I want to do things as if it was the Lord's work. I obviously don't always do that, but that's my goal. Um, so I read the book twice. Uh, I came up with about six to eight bullet points that I wanted to make sure that I communicated to potential investors. Uh, over the last 10 years, I, I, I've had people that said they wanted to partner with me or they, they would have money. Uh, to lend me, but I just didn't have the confidence to say, okay, great. Give me $160,000. Like that wasn't in my wheelhouse, but reading the book, it gave me the confidence. And so what I did, I'm a sales guy. If you can't tell, I love sales. I love business. I love marketing. So I just, what you want to do is you want to create a farming list, you know, 15 to 25 people. 
that you know that potentially might like real estate. Uh, I have a fun tagline that if you want to steal it, you can take it. I had a mentor, my mentor, Eric, he told me this uh, almost 20 years ago. And he said, Dan, I'm all about making money in my sleep. And I said, start today, me too. <laughs> so I mentioned that a lot to my investors. Hey, Dan can wait. I like make, you know, I want to help you make money in your sleep. And you do that by simple interest, compound interest, basically off an investment. So with that 10 to 15 people, I just started calling, texting them, letting them know what I'm doing. We got together for coffee or we'd go to lunch, we'd go golfing, uh, just enjoying the process, showing my passion, uh, explaining the underwriting, that they're, they're secure. This is a hard asset. This is something that's never going to go away, right? Like it's land and it's a house. This is like the assets very easy to discuss where I find my investors enjoy working with me is that I explain in depth the underwriting process and that it takes radical patience because I know this in real estate, you only have one chance to make a good buy. You only have one chance to make a good buy. Yes, you can enforce appreciation, all that stuff. But if you buy wrong, there is no forced appreciation that's going to cover that mistake. So I, like you said, mentioned, I educate them and say, hey, listen, have the money ready, but you got to be patient because we have to find the right house. I love sourcing deals. We focus on first time home buyer houses, single family residencies. Have I bought commercial? Yes. Have I bought multifamily? Yes. Will I do it again? Yes. But our wheelhouse, our success is in single family housing. I love communicating. And so what I do is I have a list of 20 to 25 people. Bi-weekly, I make a one minute video with market updates in regards to real estate and what I'm doing and potential properties. I send those out by, so two, every two weeks, I send those out and they reply back, say, hey, I'm in. Here's, you know, what do I have to do? They love the fact that they send the money to a real, uh, to a real estate attorney. They love the fact that there's a promissory note. They're on the deed and title. They, they have a mortgage. They're the additional insured on the insurance. The program sells it, like the system. You working as the person and building trust, educating, it's a win-win. And I was surprised, like people that I've been friends with for a really long time, I had no idea that they loved real estate as much as I did. And so then it's like, wow, this is great. So we have this common thread real estate now every month for my real estate investors. I mean, I love writing those checks because they trust me. I trust them. They're going to make money. I'm going to do well on my flips. So basically create a farm list, set some KPIs, key performance indicators. How many lunches are you going to have? How many coffees are you going to have? How many times are you going to take somebody golfing and just start doing the work and sharing your story. Like I said early, earlier, whatever you talk about will happen. It will. If you're righteous and true, and if you've done your homework, it will work. I tell you, Dan, you just drop so many nuggets in such a short story and short period of time. I love the nugget. Whatever you talk about is going to happen. Whatever you talk about is going to happen. And you also said another word that's so important that I want our listeners and viewers not to miss this. The word you said was you educate, you educate. You know, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we've got 47 private lenders, individuals, human beings that are investing in our deals. And here's the thing about education. Not one of those private lenders had ever heard of private money. They mm -hmm. never heard of private lending. They had never heard about self-directed IRAs and how they can use their retirement funds to get tax deferred or tax-free income. And, you know, I love another word, you know, I am educate. I talk about putting on my teacher hat all the time. Yeah. And, 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 and here on this show, I didn't bring my teacher hat with me, but uh, you know, in addition to that, educating, showing them the way, let me ask you a question. How important is it? You know, you said that the system actually sells itself, the promissory note, the deed of trust that gives, your private lenders, all the confidence in the world that they're going to be taken care of and protected. Let me ask you a question. How important is it in your experience so far in the past four months of raising $1.4 million? How important is it to separate 
teaching the program to a new potential private lender and them just learning about it and separating, having a deal for them to invest in with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I talk in stories. Um, I'm, I'm a storyteller, if you will. So uh, my first job out of, out of college, actually, I was a fourth grade teacher. <laughs> and, and I loved it. I love those kids. Uh, man, I had a nickname for all 26 of them. And I knew as a teacher, more than likely, those kids, they probably weren't going to remember everything I told them every day. But I knew this, Jay. I knew that they were going to remember how I made them feel. And so I tried to create a special place for my students. And I think I was able to do that. Um, and so people can pick up on, uh, you know, six cents, whatever you want to call it. People can pick up on your spirit. And if you're trying to be a one way road, this is not going to work. I mean, this mm -hmm. is system of people is just not going to work. But if you want to make it a two way road, if you want to make it a win win, man, you're going to have a lot of success. And so that fourth grade teacher background has really helped me because it is you just you teach the system and the program. And yes, there are there is going to be a deal. Yes. But my heart really is just to teach them and let them know, hey, this is what I'm doing. If you would like to join us, great. If you don't, hey, we're still friends. This is awesome. You know, no skin off of my nose. Um, but with that being said, you, what is your motivation? You know, what, what, what is your why? Like my why is I want to provide for my family and I want to provide for my investors. I want to honor the Lord. And so when I'm trying to do those three things, those three things on a daily basis, it's easier to separate the program from the deal because I feel like when I meet with my investors, they feel like I care about them. And because I use the word underwriting so much, they know that I've thought about this and they know that I'm going to be diligent with their money because they're trusting you with hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, that's a big deal. <laughs> and so yeah. you want to make sure that you're righteous. You're, I mean, I'm going to use the word loving because I'm a, I'm, I'm a lover of God's people. And you also want to make sure that you can execute. And those are, very important things when you go to have somebody invest with you. Yeah. Dan, one thing I love uh, talking with other real estate investors about that raise private money like you now do is how do you start conversations uh, with potential private lenders? And, uh, and I heard you say it a, a little while ago, and that's another writer downer. Um, your opener is uh, essentially, would you like to hear how you can make money in your sleep? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I love, I love that <laughs> opening conversation question. Would yeah. You, would you like to hear how you can make money in your sleep? And of course, who doesn't want to hear about, you know, how they make money in their sleep? By the way, we just had a, um, a, uh, uh, an audience member just tune in here and says, Hey, former teacher here. And he can attest that's live for the Lord before it's too late. Um, now, there's another word in addition to educate, Dan, that you have talked a lot about, and that is you've used the word underwriting. And you just mentioned a moment ago that your private lenders, your new potential private lenders really like that you talk about the underwriting aspect of a deal or of the program, and that increases their trust. So the next question is, is what do you mean by underwriting? We may have some listeners here that really don't understand that word underwriting. But before you answer the question, just in case there's a cliffhanger for you, just in case we've got some listeners or viewers that are going to have to jump off early. Let me tell you something, folks. Dan's been investing for 10 years. He knows what he's doing. You already know by now here on the show, he's trustworthy. He's a man of his word. He does what he says he will do. If you are not only a real estate investor, but maybe you just want to be passive, right? Maybe you want to make money in your sleep. Well, Dan is a great person to do business with. And if you'd like to connect with Dan on how you can put your investment capital or and or your retirement funds to work safely and securely and earn high rates of return in your sleep, Dan, what's the best way for people to reach out to you and connect? Yeah, I really appreciate that endorsement. Thank you so much. Uh, my email would be the best. And that's real simple. It's dancan at dancan.coach. That's my email, dancan at dancan.coach. You can visit my website, which is 
I think I got three in there, dot Dan can dot coach, or feel free to call me. Uh, my phone number is real simple, 509-847-3677. And every good salesperson says their phone number twice. And so that's 509-847-3677. <laughs> Thank awesome. You. And we'll put all that contact information in the show notes as well, Dan. So back to my question, what do you mean by underwriting and why is that important to a potential private lender? Most people, men and women that have capital to invest passively, let's say over a hundred thousand uh, dollars, you got to know your audience, right? They have done something right. <laughs> Uh, and so you want to show them that you know how to do things right. So underwriting basically consists of this. If uh, ARV acronym, everyone should be familiar with after repair value, market value, let's say the house is worth $100,000. Okay. The ARV is $100,000. I tell them, hey, listen, with our underwriting, we focus on first time home buyers, single family homes. And so the house ARV is going to be worth $100,000. Our underwriting works such as this. We only buy houses that are at five, no, sorry, 50,000 to $65,000. So we have to buy at a great discount, the patient's part. And so that's 50 to 65%, if you will, of the ARV, which was $100,000. There's that built in margin of error, right? Like you find things in the walls, you got to put on a new roof, things like that. You have anywhere from 50% to you know, 35% and they really enjoy that. And that's the, all you really need to know about underwriting is it's just the percentages and that's fourth grade math <laughs> back to fourth grade, uh, still doing the same thing, I guess. So, um, that's basically the, the, what I, I hit that point three to five times during the initial education process. I feel like if you say it three to five times, the investor is definitely going to hear you. And oftentimes I need to talk to somebody else. And like that's a wife or their finance guy. And so that you need to, you need to be able to have them re-communicate what you told them. And that's why I mentioned it three to five times. I love it. Um, so Dan, in my book that you read twice <laughs> before you started raising private money, <laughs> I talk about all these different ways and where and how you can go about, you know, teaching people what private money is, et cetera, raising private money. And, you know, in the book, I talk about private lender luncheons. I talk about one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I even tell my story in the book about how one of my very, very first private lenders came uh, from um, church uh, at Bible study on a Wednesday night. And, you know, he and I met in the nursery of the church building. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I talk about the direct method and the indirect method. You know, the direct method is asking that what I, what, what I, what I call the magic question. <laughs> to someone and that is, do you have investment capital or retirement funds not giving you a high rate of return safely and securely? And I prefer the indirect method, which is just asking people for help, which is yeah. what I did with one of my very first private lenders. That being said, in the $1.4 million that you've raised so far, what's your favorite way or favorite ways so far in attracting the private money? I, I really love sharing life with people. And so getting a coffee or a lunch or going golfing, like that just works for me. Um, I really want to do a luncheon. I feel like that'd be successful. Uh, the, the majority, 85% uh, has that has just been getting a cup of coffee and talking about what I'm doing. Uh, I did have the honor of presenting uh, in one of my businesses. We got together some business owners, about 60 of us, and I was able to present my program and, you know, that netted, uh, over $300,000, which was totally fantastic and awesome. I want to do the luncheon. I predominantly do one-on-one -on -one just because we've had a lot of success with it. You know, earlier you had mentioned, how do you get the word out? You know, if you just talk about it, I mean, literally an, uh, two hours before this recording, I'm at my physical trainer at the gym. I mean, I'm amped up. I'm so excited to be on this show. And so I'm talking about it. And a guy that i rare i don't know him too well he's like hey wait a minute what podcast are you doing and so i started explaining it to him you know i'm in spokane washington and he starts talking about he has an investment property in virginia
if you're if you're a great public speaker, I enjoy that too. But I enjoy one on one. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I tell my um, my members, and you're a member of the Private Money Academy. One thing I tell my members is give birth to private money. And what, <laughs> I, mean, and what I mean by that is, you know, when you're a new daddy, or you're or you're a new mama, or you're a new granddaddy, or you're a new oh, grandmama, I what can you not? shut your mouth up about All you can <laughs> yeah. do is talk about the new baby. Yeah. You talk about the baby before it's born. You talk about the baby while it's born. You talk about how it's beautiful and it's the most beautiful child that God ever created on the planet. <laughs> and you know, you count their fingers and you count their toes and that's all you can talk about. Well, <laughs> hey, look, just as you've been saying, Dan, talk about that, what you are so excited about and you can't help but attract the private money. One last question, Dan, before we sign off, and that is for the real estate investor or the wannabe real estate investor out there that's never raised private money, what's the best way to start? Well, first and foremost, you got to have a why. Why are you doing this? And that has to be deep down inside you. I know everyone talks about it, but it's true. You got to have a why and you have to make it a win-win. It has to be a two-way road. You know, three people are really winning here, in my opinion. One, the investor is winning. The second is the family that's going to buy that single family remodeled home. And the third person that's going to win is you and your team. And so create a farm list of 15 to 25 people. Read the book twice. Listen to the podcast. Pray. Ask the Lord for guidance and help. He will bring the right investors. Like we can work all we want and we can do all these things, but he's going to bring it he's going to bring the right people. And if your heart's in the right place, you're going to have success. Something I try to teach my boys and my family is fall forward. If you fail, Hey, fall forward, get up, try again. It's the Rocky. It's the Rocky story, right? Fall down, get back up. That's the story. And if you can do that and you can do that over and over again, if you can create systems by reading the book, and if you can do the people part, you're going to have success. You're going to learn a lot. That's the joy of life is learning. I talked about that earlier. And if you can have that mentality, you're going to be able to keep going. And once you get that first investor that says, yes, the dopamine, the endorphins, whatever you want to call them, they're going to be firing off like the 4th of July and you're going to want to do it again. <laughs> I love it, Dan. So again, Dan's contact information, <laughs> Todd from Massachusetts just said, amen. So, um, uh, Dan's um, uh, website is www.dancan, D-A-N-C-A-N, dot coach. And um, he'll be a great resource for you to reach out to and help you put your money to work safely and securely. And for those of you uh, real estate investors that are looking to raise private money, you know where to get the book for free. Just cover shipping, uh, jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. Dan, God bless you. I hope, you're, I hope you're coming to the upcoming live event, which is right around the corner. Uh, but I want to meet you in person very, very soon. Oh, that's a blessing. Thank you so much. It's been a blessing and an honor. Thank you for helping me and thank you for helping others, Jay. I really appreciate it. You got it, Dan. God bless you. Thank you. There you have it. Another amazing episode and an amazing story of a real estate investor just like you, just like me that goes out and just implements what they learn to do. And you know, you put it to work and the money will get attracted to you. Thank you for joining me here on the show. I really appreciate your follow me's. If you're listening uh, to uh, the show on iTunes, be sure and follow me or on Spotify. Uh, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any other amazing upcoming episodes. I look forward to seeing you right here on the very next Raising Private Money with Jay Conner. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.